here, along with the canceled one, Jim Florentine. Cancel culture has knocked on your door, my friend. You would think that, um, you know, since Eddie's not here, he's the one who got canceled. We had to kick him off <laughs> our show. We canceled Eddie. I found out that all that, all those tech problems I was having, that was Eddie. He's got all that fancy radio mm. set up in his house. He was sending a blocking signal. I, I know, so we had to give him the, the week off uh, so we could work that out. But man, dude, I'm, uh, it's unbelievable what's going on. And for people who don't know, uh, you know, Jim, you'll explain it better. But basically, you know, a comedy club in Seattle, go figure canceled Jim's appearance and some other great comics because uh, uh, they consulted with the community and uh, they didn't want to offend anybody. Um, so I'll let you take it from there. We'll, we'll start out with a little of that. Then we'll get into Slayer and a bunch of other stuff. Well, look, Eddie's not here today. We tried to make it work with time wise. Don's got his other show to do and all that stuff. Eddie's on the air at Sirius XM right now. So, um, but you know, we'll figure it out when, We'll do our next show and all that stuff. We're going to go on the Monster Rock Cruise, which goes out on Saturday. Yeah. There's a bunch of bands on there, so we're going to do a bunch of interviews from there, and then we'll we'll package them as that rock show going forward in the next couple of weeks. Right? That's yeah. our plan. So, yeah. for right now, we don't have Eddie today. He's got his show going on. That's the only time we could do it. And we interviewed KK Downing a couple of days ago. We're going to play that interview in a little bit. So, we just wanted to get that on the air because he's promote, promoting this new tour that he's got coming up with KK's Priest. So, um, yeah, so anyway, I was booked in a club in Seattle. My agent booked me, and then um, tickets were selling. It was only like two weeks they were on sale, and then all of a sudden we got an email that me and three other comics that were on my agent's roster too, they said, listen, you know, we check with the community, and we're a progressive club, and we can't have these guys here. So they canceled all four of our, our dates. You know, it's right in that uh, Chaz uh, area. You know what they shut down? The Summer of Love in 2020. Yeah. You know, that whole, like, that four-block radius where there was no cops and people getting killed and women getting raped. So, you know, you know, was I was going... I was, yes, it was the Summer of Love. I mean, it didn't work yeah. out for the girl that got raped. It didn't work out for the guy that got killed. Yeah. So, it, you know, it didn't seem like a Summer of Love. But anyway, so that that's exactly where that, where that club is in that area, so... You know, look, I haven't been to Seattle since before the pandemic. And I was, when I got booked, I'm like, all right, maybe Seattle's, you know, coming around. And obviously not. So it was like walking into a war zone if I was going to go there, you know. Well, but Jim, the, the people that are coming to see like you and Luis Gomez and Dave Smith and Kurt Metzger, they, that's your your audience is coming. And that's the whole idea about, you know, comedy. It's like, you know, in their statement or whatever, they basically said, no, we reflect all we, we respect all points of view and diversity, but except yours. So we can't have you here. Meanwhile, wouldn't you want everybody's crowds coming into your club? Because then they might see other shows that they're into. Look, if you're into, you know, gay, Asian, you know, brunch comedy show, that's great. But can I have the choice to go see Jim Florentine? And also, like, how how long out did they cancel you? Well, the, the date wasn't until the first, uh, like, September. It wasn't until okay. September 2024. But, yeah, no, you're right about that because we all have our own following, All the, uh, you know, uh, me and the other three comics. So our fans would have been coming at a club. It right. wasn't like we were coming in there and n we had no following, so just the locals were going to come see us. The locals wouldn't come see us because they would do research no. and go, that's not my type of comedy. So, But you know what? Uh, there's another club, Tacoma Comedy Club, 20 minutes away right outside of Seattle, a suburb of Seattle. So they booked me for that uh, October the 4th and 5th, that weekend. They go, we'll have you, no problem. So within 24 hours, I was booked at another club. I got all these different offers from different places up there. So they said, you know, a lot of fans up there are like, this isn't our scene. You know, don't don't judge Seattle like this. That's a weird area, and who knows yeah. what's going on at that club. So I'm booked up there, so it's fucking beautiful. So I won. <laughs> yes, as always. And they're getting all the blowback. They had to turn off the comments on their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You're going on Jesse Waters tonight. It's good. You know, it, it, we're performers and this is what we do for a living. And, and when you when you say, hey, well, you're not going to get your paycheck this week. Think about anybody else who has a regular job and your boss calls you up and says, hey, I can't have you come in this week. What do you mean? I don't I don't like your point of view. Yeah, but I'm 
I bring money into the business. I'm good at what I do. Yeah, but I don't like your point of view. Oh, you're going to pay me, right? No, you, you can't do that. It's the same for a plumber. It's the same for a cab driver. It's the same for anybody. This is what we do for a living. It's the, one of the funnest jobs in the world, but this is how we pay our bills and you know how you feed your kids and, and all that stuff. And, and when they start censoring performers, it's a slippery slope. Then another club goes, oh, yeah, we don't want that in our club either. And the next thing you know, there's just separate comedy clubs for everybody. And that and those shows will all suck because the fun thing about going to see a comedy show or any kind of show, even bands, I love when the the, the bills are offbeat a little bit, right? Because I don't want three power metal bands just blasting my face off. Give me like a classic metal band. Give me a hard rock band and, you know, something in between. And that way we have a great show. But, you know, if you're just doing one point of view, you know, you're only going to get the same 10 people in the club and it'll be gone. It'll be gone by September. So and the thing is, like, we don't even, you know, us four comics like it's not like we have like these charges against us. You know what I mean? Like we just tell dirty jokes. That's it. Like we're inappropriate on stage. We have a, we voice our opinion. So it's not like I got rape charge against me in a club's like that. Nah, we're going to we're not going to. We're going to lay off him this time. You know, I'm curious because this reminds me like when Marilyn Manson, you know, I know he's making a comeback. He's got an album done and all those yeah. charges, a lot of them were dropped. Yep. And he, I guess he paid somebody off, but a lot of them were like supposedly fake charges. Other women told other women, you know, hey, just make this shit up. And they all, all that shit got dropped. What venues is he going to be allowed to play? You know, because yeah. he's got that stink on him. You know, there's definitely going to be certain theaters go, no, we don't want him. But there'll be another theater in that town that will take him, I'm sure. Yeah. It's, it, it just, it just, it, 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 again, it's, it's just such a slippery slope to start censoring comedians and excluding people because you don't like their point of view. You, it's so ideal to have a million different points of view. That's why you serve your community. Cause I, I, you know, I posted sticking up for you. And a lot of people, like you said, they, they did write, say I live in Seattle and I hate this stuff. And I, I don't want to sit uh, to shit on Seattle as a city or the people there. Cause I've had great, great shows up there, but um, you know, it's just the people in charge there. And like you said, especially in that part of town, unless you're doing an hour of uh, you know, I hate Trump, uh, George Floyd is a saint. Uh, they don't want you in there. So um, I, it's no way for, to run a comedy club. In my opinion, there's no shows there. I would ever go see, but uh, to each their own, Tacoma stepped up, and that was very metal of them. Yeah, and look, it's not like I haven't got canceled before. I mean, I got the I, I'm divorced, so that's pretty much getting canceled. You know, I I lost half my money and my big screen TV, so I'm used to it. <laughs> Well, a, a band that uh, that's uh, that didn't get canceled, they they decide to to call it quits forever. Uh, and as we always find out, it's never forever. The Mighty Slayer are back on schedule. I predicted this five years ago that they would uh, they would come back again. Brian Slagle, our buddy from Metal Blade, said it'll never happen. He's best friends with Kerry King. It'll never happen in a million years. Tom and Kerry don't like each other. And bingo, as if on cue, they are back together. And you know, what's funny is Kerry was just like two weeks before when his first song came out and he got out there, he unveiled the new band. He was like, absolutely. I haven't talked to Tom since the tour ended. Yep. I hate uh, friggin' uh, Dave Lombardo. He's a piece of shit, whatever. Like all of this stuff, like, oh, there's no way they're ever going to do a show. He goes, I haven't talked to a guy in five years. Dave, I hate him. No, absolutely not. I got my own band. And then you're like, okay, it's definitely not going to happen. It reminds me of Guns N' Roses when they got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, when Axel sent the letter and goes, listen, take me all. I don't want, take my name off of there. I want nothing to do with this. Miles Kennedy sang that night. I was actually there that night when they got inducted. I'm like, okay, if they were ever going to get back together, it was then. So I'm like, it's never going to happen. And then it happened a year later. And then this with Slayer happened two weeks later. Yeah, well, that's why they've been on the not in this lifetime tour for the last eight years because that was Axel's reply to the to an interviewer. When are you and Slash getting back together? Not in this lifetime. So the, it all comes back around. But I always say the same thing, you know. And I had I had Mick Mars on, on my podcast on that Jameson show, and I I teased him a little about Motley coming back and all that. But the truth is, is like if the bands could still play and they're still great, let them come back. I, I don't, I know they always think they're done, but they're not because either, either you miss the limelight too much 
or the money just gets too big or both. And in this case, for sure, the money is just, it's too big to pass up. Carrie and Tom can meet on stage. They can play the songs. It's not a whole tour as of now. It's just some festival dates, but it, you know, it can be done at a certain price. Look, I've been seeing Leonard Skinner on this final tour for four years and counting now, and I'm, I'll see him again this summer. I've been seeing the Scorpions said they were going to retire. I've been seeing them. The, Judas Priest said they were going to retire a few years ago. So just don't believe any of these bands. And if they do get back together, don't be mad. Like this is my final show ever. Like if Bob Seger comes back, because Bob Seger is now retired. I loved yep. him when I saw him. If he comes back next year, I'm not going to be mad. I go, I got to see him before he retires. I never saw him before. I'll go see him again. So I that doesn't bother me. But I think what Slayer will do is they'll do festivals like every year. They'll do like two or three. Yeah. You know, maybe they'll headline download next summer or something like that. So they're not going to do full tours, but they'll do certain shows. There's too much money on the table. That's yeah. that. That's the bottom line. And yeah, I mean, you know, they, I thought they retired way too early. You know, they're probably like like fifty seven, fifty eight, yeah. maybe even early. I think they were probably even fifty six at the time, and then their career was going to be over, and they weren't going to play live anymore. They still had some some juice in them. So yeah, um, yeah, but just never believe that. Don't be disappointed when a band yeah. says there's no way, and then they do come back because we fall for it every time. I don't. I'm like, whatever, come back, yeah. please. No, but, and then the opposite of that is even is almost funnier, which is like bands like Leonard Skinner and Foreigner are out on their farewell tour, and there's no original members. Who's saying farewell? Anybody who was in the original <laughs> band said farewell decades ago. So, you know, I don't know who's saying farewell at this point, but um, you know, God bless them all. I, I don't know why you got to make a statement. You just do it. You know, everybody knows if the band's in their late 60s, early 70s, they probably are not going to tour like they used to. And this could be the last. You should always think this could be the last tour and go see them. And if they come back, they come back. Then you could you could make your choice. Some people are saying, I don't I won't go see Motley. All right. You don't have to. You know, they got John five in the band now and they're 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 moving on from that. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Bush is saying. I remember when Don said Slayer would be back. I think it's just weird that Kerry King just dropped a slamming single, one off or an album. No, there's a whole album coming. Oh, yeah. It's been done since June. I, I talked to Kerry about it. He's, he's, he's chomping at the bit to get that thing out there. And this is another thing that'll be good because even if you're a huge musician, when you do a, another band, you got it's almost like starting over. So he's going to have this cushion uh, and all the publicity of Slayer to kind of bridge that gap so that the Kerry King band can start to get some traction. Yeah, and Kerry's doing a bunch of the festivals too, you yeah. know, with his new band and stuff. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I think, cool. you know, Kerry's just, you know, he's bored. He wants to get out there and play. I don't blame him, you know, so... Uh, All right, well, we're, should be we're, good. Uh, we're running behind schedule here, so we want to skip right to the metal six packs. Yeah, let's do that. All right, our famous metal six packs, where we pick uh, our top six, and in honor of our returning guest, uh, KK Downing, uh, we are going to rank our favorite guitar duos in hard rock and heavy metal. And who are we starting with, Joe? Well, we're obviously uh, that's me. We're them. starting with me. So yep. my my uh, Slash and Izzy Stradlin is my number six. You know, the guy that's MIA, you know, eventually, <laughs> I, you hopefully someday. You never know what's he'll, happening with him. Hopefully one day he'll pop out of, uh, you know, retirement or wherever he is. Supposedly the last that we heard, he's driving around in an RV around the country. So, but no, they, they, those two guys were great. The classic, you know. First three records, you know, Izzy left after that, obviously. But yeah, that's my number six pick for guitar duos. Great one. Um, mine is mine's an outlier. We just mentioned this band, uh, Leonard Skinner. I mean, Rossington and Collins. Uh, their their dual guitar attack is so so fierce. Um, you know, those guys are both involved in all the songwriting of, of all the major songs that you know. Obviously, the guitars. The lead guitars in Freebird to speak for themselves. Um, th they had their own, obviously, band for a long time, Rossington Collins Band, and just legendary players um, and just locked in. Just unbelievably, we just lost Gary, unfortunately, but that's my number six. My number five is uh, the Aerosmith Boys, Joe Perry, yeah. Brad Whitford. 
I mean, just uh, phenomenal. I've been getting back into those old records. You know, you you let you leave them alone for a while, and then you just put them on. I just was listening to Rocks the last few days. Ah, oh, just phenomenal those two together. Ridiculous groove uh, with those guys. My number five is um, Hetfield and Hammett. You know, obviously Metallica, the biggest metal band in the world, and has been for a long time. Uh, Hetfield regarded as the greatest uh, metal rhythm guitarist. And of course, you know, Kirk Hammett doing his thing. So there you go. Number five, Metallica. Well, Joe, keep that picture up because that's my number four, unless you have a different one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, (laughs) the same one. No, um, look, I've seen these guys since day one, you know, when they were on Megaforce Record doing local shows in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Drove them around, uh, you know, and just seeing them, these a roller skating rink in Old Bridge, New Jersey, which is a gym now. It's a gym that I go to. I tell people in there, I go, Metallica played here. They're like, no, they didn't. I go, no, they did. Yeah, it was right. used to be a roller skating rink. Metallica, yeah. I saw them here. They played right there by the elliptical. Yeah, I know. So, uh, yeah, that's my number four. Um, so we go from um, a band that had um, a different guitar player originally, Dave Mustaine, and we go to the combination of Marty Friedman and Dave Mustaine. Uh, when when Marty was in the band, um, you know, Rust in Peace and Countdown to Extinction. I mean, just those two albums alone, uh, th- their dual guitar work is is just unprecedented. Uh, Dave's obviously had a, a lot of great guitar players in over the years, but Marty, without a doubt, um, the best. And of course, you know, they recorded their masterpiece. Uh, Megadeth's masterpiece, Rust in Peace. So there you go. My number three is the Judas Priest boys, KK and Glenn Tipton. KK is our guest in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, the dueling guitars there is just phenomenal. I mean, just think of the Ripper live. Yeah, I mean, everything. It's so weird, too. Like, you know, and, you know, KK, you know, obviously was holding out for a while to see if he could get back in the band. And it was weird because Priest at one one point was almost went out as a four piece because Andy Sneap couldn't do some dates. And the, and the fans were like, no, 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 we're, we're not having any of that. This this band is built on a twin guitar attack. So I'm glad they came to the senses and figured it out. My number three, though, is the brothers. Malcolm and Angus, ACDC, what can be said? Malcolm, with no question, you ask any guitar player in the business, the best rhythm guitar player in rock music of all time. And Angus, you know, the the consummate showman, a great lead guitar player. Um, So I put those guys at number three. My number two is a band that Scott Gorham and Brian Robertson, a band that Thin Lizzy, well, that's that, not the right picture, but we wouldn't have a, an episode without a, <clears throat> a screw up. <clears throat> yeah, well, anyway, but I'm a band that's creeping in my top 10, probably at number seven favorite band of all time, which wasn't in my top 30 10 years ago. <clears throat> Just rediscovering more and more of those music. They got 11 records out, and these guys played on. I, I'm, I think they played on the what, like about five or six of them together. Don, would you guess these two, this duo? Somewhere well, the, around there. The, the duo that you're talking about is Scott Gorham and Brian Robertson from Thin Lizzy, um, <clears> which <throat> is not who's pictured there. But yes, uh, um, and you could make the argument Scott Gorham and almost anybody else that was in Thin Lizzy are in the top one, two or three of all guitar rock duos, whether it's Gary Moore, whether it was Snowy White, whether it was... Um, um, Mid-Jure, I mean, you know, Scott Gorham was always the, the steady in yeah. the guitar duo, but there's no Thin, thin Lizzy as we know it, uh, even though they used to be a three-piece, it is that their, their whole sound is built on the dual guitar. Um, and it's it's coming up on my list anyway. But my number two is uh, your number three, Glenn and KK. No more needs to be said there. Um just the best in metal at doing it. No, nobody better in metal at doing it than those two. Uh, my number one is uh, the uh, Angus and Malcolm. It's just uh, that that Australian rhythm section, lead guitar, ACDC, Rose Tattoo, that kind of stuff. The Angels, Angel City, whatever. Just I love that sound and just Malcolm. I know you, Scott Ian is like Malcolm. 
Young is my favorite guitar player of all time. And, you know, and Scott obviously plays rhythm too, but just I love everything about these two. So that's my number one. And my number one, hopefully with the right photo, nope. Um, <laughs> there's, <laughs> uh, there's a guy with the, there's a guy with a uh, an afro and a bass in the middle of uh, my number one, which is Scott Gorham and Brian Robertson and Thin Lizzy, looking very much like a young Heffield and Hammett. But um, yeah, thin, there we go. Look at that full screen, even um, Thin Lizzy, the greatest. Um, love them, and uh, that's my number one right there. All right. Well, let's get to our interview with KK Downing. Yeah, let's do it. Um, we did this last week, as you mentioned, and uh, I don't think it needs any setup. Just let it roll. Don James. We'll be back on the other side. Team and really excited to talk to this guy again because there's uh, big news. They are uh, KK's Priest on the verge of their first U.S. tour. And so we welcome back KK Downing, who's hey, uh, guys. Packing, I'm, I'm as he's packing as we speak, he said. I'm here with the legends, you guys, you know, <laughs> and uh, so lovely to uh, have a chance to uh, say hello to you guys again, and obviously all the fans, metal fans over there in the States. You know, this is, you're the only guest that we've had on twice. You're a return yeah. guest, you're the only one that we've had twice, so, you know, it's that's, an honor having you back. That's cool. I hope I don't get boring this time. No, I won't be. I'll <laughs> tell you guys some new stories. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Uh, Okay. Did uh, when's the last time you you toured the United States? I mean, it, it probably was yeah. pre. So, what year was that? Two thousand nine, I think it was. Wow. Um, so we're talking yeah. fifteen years. Yes, it's been a long time. Too long, far too long. Um, yeah, far too long, Jim. But the suitcase is packed. I was just telling you guys, like I said, it's got things in there, all sorts of things. I just. Uh, it's it's so hard to pack a suitcase, isn't it? I'm going away, like you know, for a whole month to play some shows. You know, what can you fit in one suitcase? You know, um, but uh, yeah, I'm re we're all pumped up. We're ready to go. Flying out on Wednesday, uh, land in Miami, work our way up all the East Coast uh, towards uh, New York, and Buffalo. So uh, yeah, it's been far too long, you guys. I'm coming back to uh, to make a noise. Oh, yeah. And we're going to see you uh, on the, the cruise, which is really the, the Monsters of Rock cruise, which will really be your first official couple shows in America. And so uh, Jim and I and Eddie will get to see uh, yeah, the cool. first two. That's fantastic. Yeah, we're really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, you'll be there with your old uh, sparring partner, Eddie. Yeah, so uh, the team will be back. And uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. I mean, I've got no idea what to expect on this cruise. I keep trying to ask people, you know, and um, but um, like I say, it's difficult to know, isn't it? Really? So you you have you've never done a cruise before, KK? Oh no, no, never done one. So am I going to be on the stage going like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. am I, gonna, I hope I'm not going to be seasick. Yeah, we'll be like, we'll be like, wow, KK's got some new moves I've never seen. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting, you know. I don't know how all of that works, but anyway, it sounds like a great. Uh, uh, it's going to be a great exhibition and vibe, and and uh, it's going to be. I don't know. Yeah, I think that, that that's part. That's a massive part of the excitement. Is I do not do not know what to expect. The only thing I know is that we're going to be there rocking out, and hopefully the fans are going to be there joining in, and it's going to be, you know. Uh, going to be great and you do two show you know over the course of five days on the cruise you do two different shows so you're going to yeah, yeah. Uh, switch the set list up a lot during those two um i don't i hadn't thought about that you see i don't know what the deal is do we play in a different place each time is yeah. the audience it, different each time um you know yeah you play there's like four or five different uh stages on the boat so yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, you're probably playing two different places, but it could be the same crowd. Sometimes people want to go back and see the same band twice. And they don't care if you play a song that you, you know, the Ripper or something like that that you played the first time. Oh, so yeah, well, but, we've, we're, we're, our set list um, is is not too long. So when we play shows after um, the uh, the cruise, uh, our set list will be considerably longer. So we can switch songs 
as, as many as we want to. Um, if it's a, if it's um, if it's a, the same audience or a different audience, whatever. Um, just don't want to disappoint people. That's all. Yeah. It's probably I would say it's going to be eighty percent of the same audience that sees you both times. They're excited to see okay. the band. They haven't seen you guys, well, so I'd say about eighty. So um, we'll probably switch a couple of songs any, anyway. Then, if that's the case, just as, so people can, you know, uh, it might be uh, just a bit of an element of surprise. Okay, let's not tell anybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but uh, th let's talk about the set list because. Uh, obviously, you have two full-length uh, albums of your own material now with uh, Tim Ripper Owen singing. Um, but, of course, you know, you're going to have to throw in some Priest classics for the diehards. Who picks those? Is that is that more sort of based on, on Tim because he's got to sing them? Or do you just say, listen, well, you do my bidding, young man? Yeah, no, no. Um, it's definitely, I, I like to put something down because it's so hard. But um, but the thing is, it's hard, also hard to go wrong with all of these songs, you know. I mean, if we change, if we threw all of the songs out that we ha have been playing and are going to play and change the set completely, it would still be a great set, you know. Because I'd probably put it in there: Blood Red Skies, The Sinner, you know, Rock Hard Ride Free, Free Will Burning, Turbo, you know. I mean, and plus the other songs, the KK's Priest songs that we haven't played yet. You know, um, so so yeah, it's pretty hard to go wrong, and uh, and also uh, the the albums that we did with Tim, you know, people still want to hear Cathedral Spiders and um, you know uh, Halley's Home and uh, One on One and stuff like that. You know, people say you know they would like to hear some of that stuff as well. So it's pretty pretty difficult. But let's face it, we could probably we could play a five hour set, couldn't we? Really, you know. Yeah. You know what's weird about those two uh, records you did with, with Priest, with Tim? They're like buried. You can't even find them. I don't even know if they're on iTunes. And it's like they get no publicity. They were really good records. No, uh, no. Um, it just seems like they've, uh, the desire is to want to erase those songs, which is, which is extremely unfair, really, because it's a part of my musical history, Tim's musical history. And, um, and we're very, very sad. Uh, and not to make those albums available to the fans is just crazy, really. I mean, we just did uh, a festival um, at the end of last year, and we played um, we played uh, Burning Hell, and I think just that one song from that one festival had about ninety thousand hits. Yeah, you know, so um, and considerably more than other songs. You know that we played in the set. You know KK's Priest and Judas Priest songs. You know, um, but um, but yeah, it's all good. We're out there. Uh, I always say it's not what you play; it's the way that you play them. <laughs> but uh, when it gets to this level, anyway, because the songs are, are well cherished and much loved, and uh, and you know, I, I guess the only um, element for me is like the KK's Priest song, which just the fans seem to really really like as well which is great uh and, uh, and i'm i'm very very uh, grateful for that really so to mix it up and you know and it'll be forever changing the set list of course it will yeah and and then for for the fans coming out to to the u.s shows um you can get tickets at uh, kkspriest.com um or you can get it directly from the box office but the dates are all on sale now with la guns and burning witches opening yeah. so you have a, a real nice uh, package put together there yes yeah, so we got a rock and metal package there you know obviously la guns guys are extremely professional being around um they they rock their house down and obviously burning witches they look good they play good <laughs> and they perform good and all I can say, we did some shows with the uh, the ladies, uh, including Malta, in the middle of the wow. Mediterranean. For some reason, we went there and did a great show, which, which was great. And um, and yes, yeah, so it'll be a, it'll be a great show, you know. Um, like to invite everyone out to see us, just like old times. We'll be rocking out, and uh, we're all completely ready. We're on form. We're fit and ready to go. Hey, um, uh, KK, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to 
did you always uh, keep in touch with Ripper at, even after he was out of the band over the course of the years? And then when you started to do this project, brought him back in? Well, yeah, we did because the thing is, you know, um, it's kind of strange because I mean, I'm a, I'm a metal fan, you know, always have been, you know. I mean, I started back, but when I first heard Deep Purple in like 1969, 68, 69, I'm thinking, this finger is so great. You know, Ian Gillen, he was hitting the, you know, the child in time and the, the high notes, I'm thinking, this is great, you know. So I've always been a fan, you know, I'm a big fan of singers. And, um, and of course, uh, when we eventually found Ripper, and re had the realization that there are other people on the planet that can do this type of thing, you know. And um, I was always a Ripper fan, and um, and I uh, stayed a Ripper fan. And so he would come over uh, and play doing the uh, Disciples of Dio, and uh, and also Tim came over and played the whole of the Jugulator album, you know, back to back. I mean, I had to go. Uh, I, his vocals were. I'm thinking. The guy is so amazing. So I'm a big Ripper fan, and uh, and and I think he knows that as well. So uh, yeah. and um, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, I'm very fortunate to have somebody like uh, him, you know, on the microphone. Very very. When, cool. when you saw him do the Juggalator album, did you go up and jam with them that night? No, I didn't. Okay. It, Were I you tempted? He didn't know that I was going to the show, and I didn't oh. know he was doing the whole of it. The, the, I just whenever Ripper would come, I would I would always go there with AJ, who's in the band, my other guitar player, and um, we would go out there and just enjoy it. You know, being a fan, it's great. Yeah. I, I but I could swear to God when I actually saw him, you know, um, do that set, you know, um, the whole of the Jugulator album, I was we were completely blown away. It was just incredible. Uh, but anyway, Ripper is incredible, you know, and uh, you know, deserves uh, to get the acclaim that he does, you know. You guys were tour, tour, you guys were buddies on tour back in the in the Priest days as well, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, absolutely. Uh, we enjoyed uh, many recording sessions, many shows. You know, we did a lot of shows. We did a lot of traveling around, yeah. and uh, and anybody that's met. Ripper, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a cool guy, you know, he's a he's a nice guy, you know, but um, uh, I think um, I think what we've got now, we've got a good thing going. It's a great partnership, and and obviously the whole band. Uh, there's uh, everybody's professional in the band. Everybody's good at doing what they do. Everybody is out there itchy to perform, you know. Every inch of the stage gets absorbed, swallowed up when we're on there. <laughs> you know? hey, KK, let's talk talk about the uh, the other guys in the band for the people who don't know. Obviously, you and and Tim being the bigger names in the band, but let's round out the rest of the guys. Yeah, well, AJ Mills, he 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 comes from the same town as I did originally, so the synergies there were just two black country dudes, you know, um, but. Uh, he first saw us when Ripper was in the band on the Jugulator tour in Birmingham, and he was 17. And he said to me, he said, the minute I saw you with that flying V, he says, I want to be that guy, I want to do it. Just like, you know, time, just like I did with Jimi Hendrix the first time, I'm thinking, I want to be that guy. I don't know, whatever the deal is, you know, I, I can never be that guy, but aspire to have some of that, you know, that was that was AJ Mills and um, and Andy, you know, uh, he came to me later on and asked me for a bit of, to help out with his uh, his first record and the second record and we stayed in touch, you know, and uh, and now we're a team, you know, we're uh, we're, we're ax gladiators up there doing it, you know, and it's been done the way that I like him, I like the way. What, how he presents, I like the way he looks, I like his attitude, I like his playing, and uh, and we split all the solos down the middle this time, you wow. know, 50, 50, which is the way that uh, it was always meant to be with the twin axe attack. It has to be that way. Yeah, so we're good. And, um, and yeah, and so uh, when uh, I approached Ripper about doing this, um, Unfortunately, lesbians couldn't do it because uh, 
he had uh, ailments, uh, which was very sad because we just did a gig with him at the steel mill with uh, Dave Ellison on bass, which was like, loads of fun. And so it was uh, disappointing when Les couldn't make the journey with us. But anyway, Ripper said, what about Sean Elg? He'd been playing with Sean in the Three Tremors yep. and obviously doing Painkiller and all of these songs, you know. He said, oh, this guy can do the job. So we met Sean. Sean's lovely, a great, you know, a great addition to the band, you know. And uh, and I love him. I love his energy. I love his vibe. He's totally into it. And then we've got Tony on bass, Tony Newton. Tony's done a lot of things. He was in a band with Richie Faulkner uh, some years ago uh, with Dirty Deeds, I think it was, where the band was called. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, I've got the album here, and uh, which is good. But Tony does a lot of work with Iron Maiden, the Iron Maiden guys who records them. Tony's, Tony's a studio engineer, but he had his own band, Voodoo 60, put a few albums with them. You know, uh, Tony's a good all-rounder, you know, and yeah. um, and uh, and I like his performance, his vibe, you know. I mean, he's, he's here and there everywhere, and he's, you know, and uh, and he's good, and um, he's a true pro, and uh, it's and great. It's gonna to be have, easy to be on the road with too, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and great to have uh, have that sort of energy on the bass as well. So it's like I say, it's it's like all all hell Hetzel. <laughs> let's lose when we hit the stage so we're still feeling our way i think right now to now we've only done a dozen shows something like that so it's all fresh you know so we've been doing these great shows headlining festivals good festivals in in in, in europe as well um which is good and we're headlining some more this year as well um playing wacken which is great yeah um so uh yeah, so these, you know, we're put, putting our, our feet in the water, you know, by coming over and doing these shows. Uh, but we are, uh, it is promised that we would uh, be coming back in September for a six week run as well, if anybody. But if anybody gets a chance to get on a plane, train, hitch a lift down to one of these shows, please do. Love to see you there. It's going to be fairly unique. You know, it's, you know, it's a great kind of, uh, as they uh, warm up tour for us, really, we'll be coming back, hopefully, to play, uh, um, you know, those wonderful venues and places. It'll be like reliving a big part of my life coming back to the States, won't it, really? You know, I've spent so much time playing uh, so many shows there, you know. Well, what were the hot spots for Priest uh, back in the day when you toured in America? Well, I mean, where do I start, really, when you think about it? You know, I mean, we started off playing a mixture of clubs, small theatres, and then on that first tour, and then we were just about to go home, and somebody says, oh, can you jump on a plane and go and play Oakland Coliseum for two nights with Led Zeppelin? We, we just said, which way is it? <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to be going that way, but then we we went that way. So, so that was very, very memorable, of course. And... Uh, and then obviously playing places like um, Madison Square Gardens and uh, and obviously the Oz Festival, you know, with Van Halen and Scorpions, Ozzy. I mean, there were so many great shows, so many great tours that we did. You know, it was uh, so memorable. And, um, don't, you know, just to come back and uh, and it, we even played the whiskey, didn't we? Yeah. We did. We did five nights in the seventies in five nights in three three days. Five shows in three days. Yeah, five wow. shows. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a matinee thing as well. So uh there is talk of us coming back and doing a one off there. I know Kiss do it and Def Leppard and stuff like that, but it would be great just to hang out and do uh do uh do those shows and visit the old stomping grounds, the rainbow and that. And obviously, I can show the younger guys in the band. Hey, this is where you know we started and kicked off, and and uh, so yeah, it's just going to be a great vibe and uh, to revisit so many towns and cities where I've got so many cherished memories and uh, uh, of uh, 
great parties and things like that going on. <laughs> you know, I, you know the I, way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. You know, the, you guys played in a convention hall in Asbury Park, New Jersey. I think it was 81. Me, Don, and Eddie were all at that show. We didn't even know each other at that point. We met years later. Well, but I in 1980, it was with Maiden. Yeah, yeah Priest of Maiden. I went the year before. I don't know who opened for you in July of 1980. And during the encore, I threw a smoke bomb. I was sitting up top and I rolled it down the stairs and they, I got caught and I got thrown out. So I missed the encore. I mean, people used to throw fireworks, right? Didn't people yeah, like fireworks did. off all the time? Absolutely, they did. Yeah, why? Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why I had a smoke bomb and I lit it and yeah. I threw it down the aisle and they threw me out. They saw me. I don't know. But people used to throw a lot of things, didn't they? Yeah. I can remember playing Tacoma Dome the one time. And uh, after that show, the things that we were, the guys were picking up, you know, there was two live snakes thrown on stage at that <laughs> you know, bras, pants, and I mean, people throw all sorts of things up there, you know. But, uh, but anyway, probably enough said. <laughs> well, I, 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 well, there was there was a, an incident where people threw a lot of things on stage in New York City that caused you guys a little bit of trouble. Yeah, that was uh, that was that was Madison Square Garden. So I'm not sure how many times we played there. We played there a few times, but that time was just crazy, you know. Um, it was just uh, yeah. So it was a, a good bad experience, but we laughed so hard. We were kind of <laughs> knee deep in foam on the stage, and it was just like <laughs> playing on a bouncy castle. It was just right. such a vibe. It was great. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, the hall manager did. Did see me and Glenn. We snuck in for a tennis tournament years later to see John McEnroe and and Vegas Garolitis and all of those guys, you know. And the whole manager actually, we were trying because we were banned for life, you know, literally, you know. But uh, the whole manager tapped us on the show and said, hey "Guys, thanks for the new seats. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> six hundred and fifty grand worth of new seats." Uh, oh man! <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, so many great things happened in the States. I remember some somebody saying, hey, we're going to this hotel, and guess what? You can get a fishing rod and fish out of the window. Um, I'm thinking, I love going, I love fishing, great. And I'm thinking, this can't be real. So this was in Portland, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the one guy, the one guy did catch a big fish, some sort of kind of catfish or something, and he had it in the bath. And, but there's all sorts of stories about that hotel. <laughs> But it's actually true you could get little fishing rods and fish out. So, but anyway, I mean, yeah, only in America, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, what, what, what about other stuff? Um, do you miss like, uh, do you have any guilty pleasures when you're on the road in America? Like, you know, do you miss Waffle House or or White Castle or? Yeah, everything really, everything about it. I mean, because I mean, it's I mean, throughout the decades, obviously going to America, you know. Every time you went back there, there was seemingly always more to see, you know. And, and obviously, being a rock band, you're quite restricted on your travel things. I mean, myself and Glenn got to see an awful lot, really, because, you know, we used to get out of the hotel room and go and play tennis or golf or stuff like that. And we would, but we would go out there, we were excursed for miles and miles, you know. And, and you would meet people on the golf course and people would say, oh, yeah, come to this. I know a great restaurant and this, that, and the other. Well, these one guys, the one day they took us, this was somewhere in Florida, and they took us to this place, a massive, massive restaurant, you know, like a thousand people in there or something. It was where they have those jousts and things like that. Oh, know. medieval times. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking, what the hell is this shit? You know, <laughs> this is so cool. You know, all you can eat, all you can drink, all the beer you can drink, and you're watching all of this. And it was just a vibe, you know, I'm thinking, this is insane. We've got nothing like that in England. Nothing like that at all. And um, but it seemed to be endless, these theme things and things that you can do, you know. And uh, so, yeah, never a dull moment. That's great. That's awesome. Well, the tour starts on March 7th in Fort Lauderdale. You're going to do Monster Rock Cruise before that. It's about a two or three week run. And then you said most likely you guys are coming back in September to do another six weeks in America. So that's going to be great. You got Burning Witches, also LA Guns. It's going to be an awesome tour. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget the new album, The Sinner Rides Again, which is out now. Um, two full length uh, records from KK's Priest. Uh, you could get tickets at kkspriest.com. 
And um, yeah, everybody go out and, and support our guy here, our Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Grammy-winning guitar player K.K. Downing and his fantastic bands. I imagine there's going to be uh, a lot of excitement now in the States for the, to see a couple runs come through here and uh, of course Europe in the summer and so it sounds like the rest of your year is pretty pretty much scheduled for you absolutely the whirlwind is about to kick off guys so uh but it's going to be great that we're going to get to hook up with you with you both and um and Eddie as well and that's going to be pretty special yeah looking forward to these shows guys just going to bring the roof down on these uh on these venues you know so uh yeah, we, we, we're really pumped up. We haven't done a gig now for like two, two and a half months. So we're, we're up for it and uh, look forward to seeing all of you guys and all the fans one more time. I'm coming around again. I'm yeah. coming around again. We love so it, welcome. man. Yeah. Yeah, we love it. We can't wait to see it. It's going to be great. As the song says, if you sow the wind, you'll reap KK's priest. <laughs> all right. There you go. Everybody, KK Downing, and dude, thank you as always for the time. And we'll see you on the boat. Don't forget, pack your leather jacket and your speedos, and we'll see you on the ship. Okay, you guys, <laughs> troublemakers. We'll see you there for a beer. Can't be missed. Thanks, KK. The guy still got plenty of energy, man. He's, I mean, you could tell he's genuinely excited about doing this. He really is. Uh, um, you know, we're going to see two of the shows on the cruise because they all the bands do two sets and then they're playing Starland Ballroom here in New Jersey, I think Friday, March 19th or 22nd or something that we're going to go to too. Yeah. So I'm going to see him three times in, in the, this month of March. So I'm excited. And just seeing Tim Ripper Owens. You know, it's going to be great. So uh, it's going to be a fun time. Well, yeah, Tim's a, Tim's a friend of ours for years. And, um, you know, and I think they will they'll they will change up the set list. And, you know, definitely in terms of what Priest songs that they do. And um, even though Priest has changed up their, their set list over the recent years, um, you know, th those guys play stuff that that Judas Priest hasn't played in a long time. So and it's always fun to hear. Tim's versions of uh, of the old Judas Priest classics. I still think his version of Diamonds and Rust on that that one live album that they did um, live in England was it? Um, it maybe even better than Halford. So uh, it's going to be a great time and a, gr a great lineup. Like we were saying at the top of the show, you got a hard rock band in the middle. You got some, you know, you got some female power metal at the beginning, and KK bringing down the house at the end. It's going to be great, man. So this is going to be the, so we'll probably be back in, I'm thinking two weeks with that rock show. We're going to be on the cruise for a week. So we won't be able to do anything from there, but we're going to do, like I said, we're going to be doing a bunch of interviews like this. We'll insert them in the show. Uh, you know, we got Ace Freely on the boat. We got Accept, Queensryche, uh, you know, all the guys. So we're going to, we're going to get a ton of bands, you know, to uh, do some interviews. Eddie will be back when he can make it. We're all going to try to do it with our schedule. So we'll figure it out. Absolutely. So let's, uh, we're going to have to say goodbye for now to you guys. Thank you for everybody who tuned in live um, and for the people who are watching this on uh, on their own time. Thank you guys for hanging in there with us. We're going to try to get, like Jim said, back on track a little better. We're going to go off now and do a member show. So for all the members that uh, have hung in with us, we will see you over there and we're going to do our picks there and a death metal logo and stuff we didn't get to in this show just because we're a little short on time. But um, I know Jim, one of the plugs I have for Jim and I uh, and our friend Mark Riccadonna will be together in uh, at, on March. Uh, 10th. There's a flyer for it. 10th? March 10th, we're at the Debonair Music Hall in Teaneck, New Jersey, a Sunday night. Yeah, so come check us out there. And I got some tour dates, and I'll be in Buffalo, Albany, Ithaca, Tampa with Don Jameson, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, Hershey, Phoenix, and Tacoma, Washington. Fill in for that uh, Seattle date. All dates on my website, jimflorentine.com. Yeah, make sure you check his website because uh, he might get canceled again. And also, right. I'm, I'm, uh, Bruce Dickinson is a co-host of my show on Ozzy's Boneyard this week. It airs Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern. He'll be my co-host this week, and the following week is Rob Halford co-hosting the show so awesome bruce's album's coming out tomorrow on uh, friday and then the priest album is coming out march 9th i think it is or the 8th very nice 
All right, Jimbo, I'll see you on the other side, my friend. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. We'll uh, see you. I don't know how to get out of this anymore. <laughs>